There is no viable and proven technology to decarbonize heavy transportation, which is a big, big challenge towards our decarbonization. The company's technology is really going to be critical to meet our global climate goal. There are very few things that are uniform throughout all countries, all cultures, um, but climate change is a language that we all speak and we all have an obligation to put forth the same amount of effort if we're going to realize real change. Trucking and shipping, even if we know that there is massive greenhouse gas coming out of them, we can't really stop them because they are the backbone of the global economy. So we have to find a way to continue our business while not generating the greenhouse gases. Now it's 3% global greenhouse gas emission is coming from maritime shipping, but that is only increasing, as I said. If we are not taking any action today, that is increasing up to 10% in 2040 and 2050. One out of 10 carbon molecules received from the atmosphere could be from the maritime vessels. We have to stop it, but there's not really many solutions available. Ammonia hasn't been used as a fuel before, but it is a very well-established commodity. So ammonia is actually the second most commonly produced chemical in the world. AMOG is effectively piggybacking on a very well-developed production and distribution network. What we're providing is the last missing element of it, that is, how do you take this ammonia and convert it into electricity? So by providing this last missing link, we're providing a complete solution. Ammonia may be the only affordable fuel we can use to transition the heavy transportations. So now in the global shipping, we use 300 million tons of the fuel every year. So we really need the renewable fuel to be affordable and accessible. And Ammonia presents that to the market. The advantage really comes from the fact that ammonia is a clean fuel. It doesn't produce any carbon emissions. And ammonia also, we have used it over 100 years as a fertilizer, chemical feedstock, and refrigerant. So we know how to handle it. The most important part in the renewable energy scene is that ammonia has high energy density. Compared to the state-of-the-art battery technology, under the same volume, you can store more than five times energy, but under the same weight, you can store more than 10 times the energy. The key piece that's missing right now of using ammonia as a fuel is getting that energy out from ammonia in an efficient manner. And that's where Amoji comes in. So when we first came up with the idea of using ammonia as a fuel and bringing this technology, not many people believed it. But by presenting our technology in the smaller scale, which was drawn, it really provided the evidence of the technology working in the vehicle, which was great initial success of the company. The success then brought additional resources to the company. Then we started working on the scaling of the technology because technology has to be scalable. And also, we eventually want to really bring the technology to the scale of ships and trucks so that we can decarbonize heavy transportations. So after drone, we worked additional seven to eight months and scaled the technology 20 times bigger. So last spring in May 2022, we have presented our technology in the John Deere tractor, which was another big, big milestone. But we didn't stop there. We continued scaling our technology and only this year we presented for the first time the semi-truck, the 18-wheeler powered by ammonia using our technology. So we're going to be um, adding all of the components of our system onto the truck. So it'll start from the ammonia tanks that are going to be mounted to where the diesel tanks you removed uh, used to be. That will flow into the reactor. The reactor enclosure has got a set of reactors that will convert the ammonia into hydrogen. Those will go on the back of the vehicle. And then underneath it, any um, unconverted ammonia will be absorbed into our absorbers. And at the end of the day, you've got a moving truck. For the past six months, our team has been 
scaling up our technology in the lab, making the system that we tested earlier last year on our farming tractor into a few times larger. While we were in the lab, we tested our reactors individually and then as a system along with fuel cell. And then we brought it out to our truck, put it all together and brought it to this test track so that we can get our truck up to highway speeds, have it run for a full duration of a full ammonia tank um, and demonstrate that it is comparable to a diesel or fuel powered vehicle. In terms of fueling, we've had, you know, the process takes is relatively, it's just like going to the gas station, you hook up the system and it takes literally minutes to fill up a tank. So, safe and efficient. I think the really differentiating factor for Amogee is that we have built the systems. We have demonstrated them at a real scale. This is something tangible, and this is something that our customers can witness, experience, see how the tractor or truck or the future vessel will operate. The Tugboat project is a huge deal for Amogee. This is our first maritime deployment, the first in the world actually of an ammonia powered vessel. And that speaks volumes to our ability to scale up in a short amount of time, as well as set the precedent that we are a first mover and that the shipping industry is ready for ammonia powered ships. In maritime especially, uh, ammonia is looked at as a very important future marine fuel. A lot of technologies have been on the combustion side. To use it in a fuel cell is something that people have tried but have not had such a great success as we did. And nobody has really proved that this can be done except for us in this first time. With the tugboat, we're showing it to the industry that this is not something from a science fiction. This is something that is already happening this year in 2023, which is very close to 2030 and 2050, these big targets that people are talking about. How does it feel? to be on the cusp of this technology entering the commercial marketplace, it's extremely exciting. Some days it feels like we have a long way to go on this project in particular, but every time that I feel like that, I take a step back and say, it's not about this tugboat. This tugboat is just the start. I expect to be the launch pad for commercialization. So once our customers and partners see that this demo will be a success once the regulatory agencies see that we can, in fact, use and deploy our technology safely. I have no doubt that customers will be lining up to work on projects with us. We already see that happening following the success of the tractor, the truck, and now having some insight into the development of this tugboat project. So from here on out, it's real commercialization. It's can we learn from the tugboat demo on as well as conversations with our partners on what the industry is looking for, what the market is looking for, and how we can improve what we're doing now for long-term maritime use. This project in particular shows that you don't have to have a new build ship. You don't have to have a totally new design concept to incorporate a new propulsion technology. You don't have to have a totally new start from scratch design to be zero emission. And I think if we can retrofit this vessel, we can retrofit any vessel out there. And that is a pretty powerful story. We're looking at changing everything about the way we make things and the way we move. Let's be honest, that's going to require massive amounts of money. And there's no one sector that can carry that burden on their backs. So federal investment is absolutely critical, whether it's through incentives, grants, or loans. We're all in this together, in, together in this great energy transition. So the company has raised a Series B funding and the Series B funding is important because that is enabling the commercialization of the technology. So the company has been remarkably scaling the technology, demonstrating the different platforms, including the tugboat that we are planning to demonstrate later this year. But now it's time for us to commercialize. Now it's time for us to bring the technology to the customer's hands. Our customers in the maritime industry and beyond can actually benefit by using our technology and start active decarbonization of their industries. In total, we're gonna to raise over $200 million of cash through equity investments. It's a signal that's revolutionary. Um, our technology 
there's certainly a lot of technical aspects to it, um, but just from a broad level, it's it's something that's never been done at the scale before. And I think the investors see that and they're excited about it. So this next round of funding is gonna be used for technology and commercialization in two broad buckets. For the technology, it's broken down in a few subcomponents and that it's gonna be used for continued R&D efforts, um, our product development to really get our product ready to go to market. And then also our expansion to Houston. So Houston is gonna be the next growth wave of the business. We have been concentrating, if you wanna say, in the R&D phase. Now it's really to take the funding and say, now how do we build out? How do we upfit our facility? How do we expand our lab for, I call it not only today, but also for the future, as far as everything that goes into the making of that product. I'm really proud of not only the technology, but I'm really proud of the team that uh, we were able to build together. We were able to identify many technical leaders within the team who are growing really fast as the company is growing, which I think eventually will allow us to be successful. The reason why I became an engineer is because I wanted to build something that I can see. And I cannot emphasize enough like how excited I am to see the technology that we're building together, working in a tractor and truck, and finally on a tugboat. I think the whole team is sharing that excitement and I, I'm hoping that that will create the focus and speed and allowing us to be successful in the market. I don't know the technology. Um, when I was interviewing, Sahoon had to describe it to me and I still don't understand it. And I joined mainly because of him. And then I have learned all the work that the rest of the team is doing and the revolutionary work, I think is really what gets me most excited about working here at Amagi. We, as professionals, we can choose where to put our time and energy into and choosing to do it into something like Amagi that actually can make big change in the future. The fiber, if you want to say, of a startup company, it's not for everybody. It really isn't. There's long hours, there's no doubt about that, okay? But at the end of the day, you have to say, well, look what we accomplished, look at this. And it's great to be first. It's great to be first. And I, I challenge anybody to keep up. <laughs> I challenge all the outsiders. Just watch. <laughs> we are building the first kind of technology that never existed in the world. Meaning, everything we do, everything we learn is the first time we do it. What that means is we really have to stay committed and dedicated and put a lot of work together to make everyday innovation together. So that's what Amage team does. All of us putting all hands together, pushing our boundaries every day. That has been really the core value that we have created and the core driver of the company's success for the last two years, which actually makes me more excited for what we can achieve in the future.